Are you pregnant and you've noticed some changes in your vision? Well, that is not just in your head. If you want to find out what exactly is going on, keep watching. Dr. Rupa, board certified ophthalmologist, mom to three kids, and lover of all things makeup. And on this channel, we talk about eye health, eye surgery, eye makeup health, and a little bit about my life here in Hawaii. So if any of that interests you, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you can follow along. All right, pregnancy and your eyes. I've obviously been pregnant three times and it can be really brutal in so many different ways, though I loved being pregnant personally. I know not everyone feels that way, but I, I'd have like three more children if I wasn't so old, but it can also affect your vision. Most people don't realize that. And there's a bunch of different ways that I want to talk about of how it can. So pregnancy is obviously characterized by 40 weeks of hormones to your body as well as your baby. And there are a bunch of medicines that are actually contraindicated in pregnancy that can have eye complications or you need for eye diseases. And there are particular eye diseases that you might be at risk for when you are pregnant. So it's really important to know about all of these. So first you might have noticed that your vision is just not as good as it used to be. And you might notice when you go to the eye doctor that your glasses or your contact lens prescription has changed. That is not in your head. And there's a reason for that. Just as everything becomes fluid filled with pregnancy, the structures of your eye do so as well. And that fluid actually changes your contact lens and your glasses prescription by affecting the refraction of the light onto the retina. So a lot of women will complain, I can't see at night. And that's really common, especially in pregnancy because pregnancy will induce myopia or nearsightedness. And typically that means you can't see things far away and it's worse at nighttime because that's kind of when everything is really dark, it is a little bit more challenging. So night myopia is quite common in pregnancy. You can also get a little bit of astigmatism. Again, everything is changing shape. All astigmatism is, is the shape of the front structure of your eye, that it's shaped a little bit more like an egg or a football, instead of being perfectly round like a basketball. So you can have some mild collagen, some mild changes in the front structure as you are pregnant. And that's going to induce some astigmatism that you might not have had prior to pregnancy. This is why I always recommend that pregnant women do not change their glasses or contact lens prescriptions when they're pregnant because it's like chasing a moving target. It's hopefully going to improve once they deliver the baby or even once they stop breastfeeding because usually those hormones are still really active if you are breastfeeding as well. So I recommend getting your new prescription when you are not exclusively breastfeeding. So if you have started introducing solids to your baby's diet, then you can go ahead and get that update. This is also the reason why no LASIK surgeon, no ophthalmologist will perform LASIK surgery on someone who is pregnant or someone who is exclusively breastfeeding. Typically they want you out of that breastfeeding window um, by about six to 12 months because they want everything to stabilize. They don't wanna be chasing that moving target. If your prescription is changing, then the ophthalmologist cannot be sure what to operate for and they can miss that target and do LASIK surgery and and you might be under or even over corrected, which is never a good thing. Now there's a, a lot of different medical problems that can happen when you are pregnant that actually do have eye manifestations. And sometimes the eye things are what you notice first more than anything else. So that's really important to pay attention to. High blood pressure, diabetes, pregnancy can worsen tumors. So brain tumors can actually affect your peripheral visual field retinal problems, and even blood vessel clots can all affect your vision. So first, let's take a look at eclampsia. You've probably heard of eclampsia or preeclampsia. That's really, really high blood pressure after the 20th week of gestation. It usually occurs with your first child and causes swelling in your hands and feet and affects your kidneys as well. And here's the thing, it can cause headaches, vomiting, and seizures, as well as eye problems too. So this is actually why your OB asks you at every visit if you're having any headaches or blurred vision, because the blurred vision can be a manifestation of eclampsia. So you might actually see lightning flashes, 
like a blacking out of your vision. It just might be blurred. Just things might not seem as saturated. Anything like that, you absolutely need to let your OB know right away so that they can check your blood pressure and make sure it is not this very life-threatening condition, which can also affect the baby. Typically, the eyes improve when the medical condition is treated, and usually what you have to do is deliver the baby if it's safe to do so. So that's something to really watch out for. Second is gestational diabetes. I was lucky enough to have this one with my third baby, and that is diabetes that occurs because you are pregnant. Typically, this is in people who have not had a history of diabetes, an older age, like being over 35. I was 37 when I had my third pregnancy. Um, all of that puts you at risk for developing gestational diabetes. So the mechanism for gestational diabetes is the same. It's just your body is not not making enough insulin during pregnancy. So if you have gestational diabetes, you need to see your ophthalmologist. And I do recommend seeing an ophthalmologist, which is a medical doctor like myself, as opposed to an optometrist. You need to see your ophthalmologist every trimester. So every three months, just not every month, but every trimester, just to take a look at the inside of your eyes. What we like to do is examine the retina of the eye and see if there's any retinal bleeding or retina changes. Now, the good news is the risk of what we call retinopathy, changes in the retina, is much lower in gestational diabetes than if you had type 1 or type 2 diabetes. So that's really good. But if you were diabetic before pregnancy and it's not just gestational diabetes, but you're just a diabetic pregnant person, then your risk of retinopathy actually increases. And again, just like eclampsia, we've seen that if you have gestational diabetes and you have retinopathy or even just a diabetic retinopathy, when you're pregnant, all of this tends to improve and resolve after you give birth and after the uh, diabetes is managed. So that's nothing long term. Hopefully your vision threatening is going to be a complication from that. Third is blood clots in your eyes. That can actually happen. As you advance in pregnancy, your blood becomes more viscous. It becomes more thick. And that's why pregnant women are a little bit more at risk for throwing blood clot. So those clots can happen everywhere in your body, not just your eyes, but your lungs, your heart, and even your eyes. And that's where it can cause profound vision loss. So you absolutely have to let your OB know if that's the case for you. And your OB, if you don't already have an ophthalmologist, is gonna refer you to an ophthalmologist because basically that is like a mini stroke in your eye. It's called a retinal artery or retinal vein occlusion. And sometimes really immediate treatment can save the vision in your eye. It depends on which kind that you have. So don't neglect symptoms of blurred vision. It could be a sign of eclampsia or even a blood clot. Definitely let us know. And then last is something really specific, and it's kind of rare, but I have seen this happen before. It's called central serous chorea retinopathy. Basically, this is just a blister of fluid underneath your retina and it usually happens during your first couple trimesters of pregnancy. It's thought that the hormones uh, is the cause of the fluid buildup. Usually this condition happens in type A, you know, like OCD, high stress males with a lot of cortisol. But of course, when you're pregnant, you have a lot of stress cortisol and hormones, and that can also predispose you to developing this fluid blister. And it happens in the macula, which is the centermost aspect of your retina. So you will 100% notice that change in vision. You might feel like your vision is blurred, vision might seem dimmer, it might seem wavy, or things might actually seem smaller in one eye than the other. Definitely see your ophthalmologist ASAP if you experience any of those vision changes. And then there's a condition that a lot of people have when they get pregnant, which is glaucoma. And the unfortunate thing is, usually we treat glaucoma with eye drops, but a lot of these glaucoma drops are contraindicated in pregnancy. And that's because they can induce preterm labor and even decrease the baby's heart rate. So if you have really advanced glaucoma and you're pregnant, then your ophthalmologist is gonna go over something called punctal occlusion, where you put a drop in the eye and then you actually push on the inner corner right here to prevent the drop from being absorbed into the rest of your body, because that's where that happens. If it goes down into your punctum, which is this little hole right there, there's one in the top and the bottom, 
and then it gets absorbed into your nose and then through the bloodstream there. So if you can prevent that from happening and punctal occlusion is actually very, very effective at preventing systemic absorption, then you can prevent it from getting into the rest of your body and into your baby's bloodstream. And then two super common eye conditions that happen a lot when you are pregnant, allergic conjunctivitis. I got this, I just have terrible seasonal allergies, which are of course year round because I live in Hawaii, mangoes, flowers, everything. Unfortunately, a lot of the medications for allergies and even allergic conjunctivitis, which is the red, itchy, watery, teary eyes you get from your seasonal allergies, you can't use them in pregnancy. So you have to use those supportive measures, just trying to avoid the allergen, change your clothes when you get home, wash your face, use just artificial tears. Um, unfortunately, the eye drops and the steroid drops are not, you can't use them, they're contraindicated. So cold compresses, artificial tears, they're your best friends when you have allergic conjunctivitis. And then a lot of people that when they're pregnant, they notice their dry eyes get worse, again, because of the hormonal changes. So symptoms might be light sensitivity, um, redness, just kind of foreign body sensation, gritty. Again, artificial tears, this time hot compresses are really helpful. Making sure to take breaks when you are on your computer or on your device, following that 20-20-20 rule, doing all the things that you can to prevent worsening of the dry eye. I've got a fan on, usually fans are gonna make things worse. Just paying attention to everything that you can control in the environment and using just the teardrops and compresses as much as possible. So there you go. Those are some of the most common eye conditions I see in pregnancy. There's reasons why your vision may decrease, some relatively benign ones, like just a vision change because your glasses prescription change, and then some more scary ones that like eclampsia or a blood clot in your retina that you wanna be mindful of. But hopefully if you're watching this, I'm really hoping that you have a wonderful and amazing pregnancy that has no complications, but it's always best to be educated so you know just in case what might be uh, down the pipe. So let me know if you've experienced any of these pregnancy eye health complications or if you've had any issues with your vision in general during pregnancy, I'd love to know. Drop them in the comments below and also let me know if you've got any ideas for future topics for me to discuss for eye health videos, I'm happy to do so. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupo. It's good to see you, bye-bye.